Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS and the inventor of the CTKS method and Borsog Trading. If you're new, welcome and welcome back KS family. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently up 1.02% to 23,261. Ethereum is up 0.88% to 1708. Before we get into any trading or investing, and we know all investors become traders anytime they buy or sell, we get primed for profitability in the crypto market through the CTKS creed, which is just a series of affirmations that you can say to yourself. I know the universe wants me to succeed. Every day I show kindness, integrity and gratitude. I know opportunities and life reset daily. I am worthy. I go slow to go fast. I start small and scale with Borsog, buy on red, sell on green. Life pullbacks give me strength for the next life rally. I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. I've left helpful links in the description of this video, such as the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass. Please also note that the CTKS Partial Masterclass Scholarship is open. And there are many interesting links in here, such as the tax software I use, TradingView, and a number of different other spot exchanges, and some other links that are really, really useful to you. Rule 225, Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. One thing that we understand, the markets are coming into resistance. The markets came into resistance back here on the NASDAQ around the 28th of March. What did they do? They hit resistance, came back, hit it again and decayed. What do we expect to see in the US markets? Well, it's a little hard to tell. We've had a very good rally up. We would expect from probabilities to get a rally down to a level of support, hit support, retest and resume up through this resistance. That's if things go for us. We always have our ANF strategy. That is, we think about what will happen if it goes for us, but also what happens when it goes against us or goes nowhere. If price was to go against us, we may see a sell off like this. We have to be prepared for this, but we know there are always opportunities inside the crypto market. So even if markets go down, we know the opportunities are there because we're looking for them. How far away from resistance literally are we? We're about 2% away from resistance in terms of the NASDAQ. We're about 5.78% away from resistance in terms of the S&P 500. The Dow Jones has had a lot more weakness than the other major indices. We're actually been under resistance in the Dow since the 2nd of August, so quite a few days. And we're about 1.19% away from this level of resistance. This top level of resistance is where we're measuring the NASDAQ, the S&P and the Russell 2000. Now, why are we doing this? You say, Ken, we're just into crypto. We don't care about these major indices in the US. Well, you should care because they absolutely influence where Bitcoin is going. And you can see the Russell 2000 is really, really close to that upper resistance level just 0.46% away. I fully believe for the next couple of years, we're entering into a trader's market. And I'm not alone in that. Many of our beloved family members think so also. When you have a look at the Wall Street Journal, investors brace for more market volatility. The outlook, weak growth, tight job markets are a global phenomenon. It's really good to actually learn how to trade if you're an investor. Learning how to trade will help you to time entries and exits. It's something that every investor should apportion just a small percentage of their funds to do. How do you learn how to trade? It's a lot of knowledge involved and a lot of investors simply don't have this knowledge. And it's a shame because having the knowledge of how to draw up your charts with the CTKS method, how to analyze outside trends, how to come back into the crypto market and find the market's focus, but more especially and very, very importantly, having a real wealth focus and mastering emotional control just here is so incredibly important before you buy or you sell. 
That is, before you pull the trigger on any specific trade. And we know that all we need to do is to apply rule 359 beyond the right side of the percentage. You can make money no matter what kind of market you're in if you're on the right side of the percentage. It's important to have a context on outside trends. And we can assess outside trends just directly from the charts. And Masterclass students, you get this live chart in TM6. Now, the markets are not open, so we can only talk about what did happen. We saw fear receding from the markets, and that created a leg up. But these are the futures. So the futures, what did we witness? A retracement down to a support line, a rally back up, but then that rally was squashed. It doesn't mean that the upward price momentum won't continue. We can see Bitcoin's price action in blue here. It's quite positive, but we know it's also coming close to resistance. So we've got to be a little bit careful. It's at a point of structural uncertainty in the markets. And when we look at junk bonds, which is a very risk on metric, we can see the junk bonds are starting to curve over. We may see a bit of a decrease, a spike in fear, and that would drive prices down. What about oil? Oil? was getting above its resistance, but it's now since actually collapsed below resistance. It's on the way down. What about bond prices? Bond prices are decreasing. Bond yields are increasing. Gold hit that mythic 1810 level that we were talking about. And when we consider the gold basically just fell off a cliff, it was just going down and down and down when it couldn't hold on to all this support. And now what it's done is come back into that area. There's a lot happening in the world. So when we see tensions rise, especially between superpowers, we expect gold, which is very geopolitically sensitive, to rally up. What are we noticing here? There was a decrease in geopolitical tension, and now they're not quite sure. We'll look into this a little bit later. And when we look at the dollar, the dollar looks to have crossed a tight level of resistance and it's looking to actually increase. That can be a sign that money is flowing into the DXY. And this can be because of a lot of different reasons. Most market commentators say it's a flight to safety. It's a little bit more complex than that. Looking at geopolitical risk, China, Taiwan is definitely a big one up there. And what we need to look at, China expands military drills into the Yellow Sea. China was saying that the military drills would finish yesterday. They have not finished. They've expanded. And now we're getting news. China military will now, from now on, conduct regular military drills. Fantastic, China. On the east side of the Taiwan Strait median line, I can share a couple of different charts with you. Taiwan Defense Ministry blasts China live fire zones as blockade. What we can see here, in 1996, this was the military incursion. And when we look at August of 2022, you can see those red areas. And they're extending into the Philippines and into Japan. This is quite provocative. And it will actually cause Japan and Philippines to have to make alliance movements. This shows where the actual missiles were launched from and where they landed. So you can see this one landed in the Japanese territory and this one close to Japan's territory as well. And this one flew over the capital of Taiwan. The Taiwan News said basically the reason that Taiwan is not shooting down these missiles is it's outside their airspace. This gives you more of a three-dimensional look on what actually happened with those missiles. As a former gold trader, gold is very, very sensitive to geopolitical conflict. And what I've got here, I bought a subscription version of Flight Radar 24 so I could show you what's happening over time. You can see all the aircraft that are over China and then in Taiwan as well. And if we just zoom in here, you can see that normal air traffic abounds at the moment. And how does it look when war breaks out? What war looks like is this. You can see the Ukraine. Ukraine is a no-fly zone. Of course it's no-fly because commercial airliners don't want to get shot out of the sky. 
I'll keep a very close eye on what is actually happening if China's airspace becomes empty like Ukraine's. And of course, I'll give you updates each day. We've been keeping a very close eye on Bitcoin and we understand that Bitcoin has actually bypassed one level of resistance. It's actually quite well supported up at the moment. And you can see this recent price action. We got literally above that level of resistance just for a tick and then it sold down and pinged between resistance and support. And then it came straight back to resistance. Resistance, support, resistance, and now it's pinging backwards and forwards. It can't quite figure out if it wants to get out of there or it wants to go down. But the probability is on price continuing to increase unless we break this support line. If we break the support line, the next support line would be down here at 22,376. Currently, Bitcoin is currently <laughs> trading at 23,200. Just bear in mind, these support and resistance levels are really, really important to understand. So where did we see 0.42? I'll just draw it in for you. Well done to our global family members in the community who figured out that 42 was around the 22,900 mark. Well done. And what we can see is the price is going up at the moment trying to challenge this very tight resistance line. If we get above that resistance and things go forward, that's a fantastic thing. We always have our ANF strategy in play. We think, what if price goes against us? For example, what if price were to come back down to say 22,300? How would we deal with that? And you have to think about how you would deal with it not just for a specific trade, but your entire portfolio as well. And what if it just rallied upwards? And of course, what if it goes nowhere? That's the end part. Please let me know in the comments, just maybe pop a number, say one, two, three, or a letter, A, B, C, D. So A is this level of support, B is the 23 and a half, C is this one, D is this. These are the resistance levels above, B, C, D. And the supports below, A, 1, 2, and 3. This is really powerful for your active learning. If you actively learn, you will become more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love. A week ago, we had a probability of 72% that a 50 basis point increase was coming. Now we've got a 71%, 71.5% chance or probability that the increase will be 75 basis points. This is basically on the back of very strong jobs. But we talked through this a couple of episodes ago. How they actually do their forecasts is really dodgy. They have incredible inaccuracy in their forecast rates. So just be aware of that. If you go into episode 614, about a minute in, I start discussing all of those projections. And what you'll see is their forecasts and actuals typically vary wildly from one another. That basically means they can paint any kind of story that they want. It would be different if the forecasts and actuals were quite close to each other, but we don't see that. Something interesting that we do see, and Masterclass students, you'll get my live chart here in TM4, as well as a much deeper explanation of what's going on here. We can see the 10-year and the 5-year break-even inflation rates coming down, and we notice that we had an increase from 50 basis points to 75 basis points. That would be the reason and logic behind that. And this is pretty good because the NASDAQ is still going up. Bitcoin is also going up. But one thing I wanted to point out to you, the Fed balance sheet has actually been reduced. You can see it coming down. And this is part of the tightening process that they're doing. Looking at the precious metals, we can see the inverse VIX falling away. So that means that basically the fear gauge of the market is coming down. And this is very good positive news for precious metals because it means the risk behavior is back on. But what we've seen, platinum, platinum and palladium have been doing quite well. Gold bottomed around the 15th of July and it's been coming up. And Bitcoin had bottomed around the 18th. 
So when I say bottom, it's just a short term. I'm not saying the bottom is in. I know a lot of people say that the bottom is in, but the concept, if war breaks out between China and Taiwan, so many countries are going to get pulled in and that's going to hit the markets like a black swan. So we can't really say the bottom is in right now. And it's no use looking at on-chain data or anything else. Geopolitical events have a major impact on markets. We cannot discount them. Unfortunately, C19 is still around, nearly 590 million cases and 6.4 million deaths, just shocking. And what we actually noticed, the daily deaths were decreasing, but they started to increase. And what we're seeing is a little bit of a disturbing thing. You remember when C19 first broke out, there was a concentration around Taiwan, South Korea, Japan, you might remember that. And then it spread in through Italy and through France as well. What we're noticing here, the number of new cases is quite alarming in terms this could be another wave coming through. If you're going through a life pullback, please know that our community's love and healing thoughts are with you. You're not alone. The sun will come out again and there is always hope. We know that Bitcoin is influenced by global macro events, as is the stock market. But rule 45, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. Pretty important rule. The latest Crypto Fear and Greed Index is currently 30. We've seen a lot of optimism flow back into the crypto market, which is fantastic. And it's all about trading at the moment. Many people want to invest in crypto, and that's a really, really good idea. You should learn all about investing. But I believe over the next couple of years, it will be a trader's market. Traders can take advantage of the wave movement that's inherent. For example, let's just zoom in. There's a lot of negative momentum inside the market at the moment, and we can see we're coming up to levels of resistance. I've just come back to the 18th of June, just to give you an understanding of what actually happens. If you are on the right side of the percentage, you will make money. And that takes knowledge, and it also takes patience. And what we actually can see here, when we just zoom in here, when we look at Bitcoin's price, Bitcoin is always moving in a wave and so too are all of the other cryptos. Traders can take advantage of this. A lot of people, when they get into crypto, they want to make two, three, four, five thousand percent profit, but they don't realize that if you just follow the waving movement of the crypto market, you can do very, very well. I'll just show you what 2% actually looks like. And you can see price is always coming up and down, up and down. It's actually quite straightforward to get 2% out of Bitcoin. But of course, it all depends where you buy and where you sell. So that's why Borsog is so incredibly valuable. It's all about getting used to the negative price momentum and using that volatility as your best friend. And of course, this is on the one hour view. That's why it's sort of all over the place. Now we're up to our current price action. I'll just show you what 2% looks like. If you had $1,000 and could just get an average 2% per day, you would grow that $1,000 into 1.38 million. 2% is nothing to sneeze at. So many people get into crypto and just think, I need to get 50, 60, uh, thousand percent return in order to be worthy you don't you can just get two percent per day wow i invented borsog trading from rule 621 buy on red sell on green it may seem like a simple rule but it's not you need a lot of knowledge to borsog and that knowledge is inside the masterclass. you would think that if a driver got their license they would know how to park well, this guy certainly did park over two spots and this guy parked and locked the other guy in and this guy parked. Oh, I don't know how he parked, but the concept is just because you have a license, just because you have the knowledge, you need to apply it. That's why Borsog is all about starting small and scaling. Borsog is a market synchronization trading technique. It's designed to get you into the flow of the crypto market and do so just using coffee money. Let's have a look at the longs and the shorts. We can see the shorts 
were decreasing and they did that bit of a spike. Remember yesterday I was t telling you about this looks like a basing action. Probably the shorts may have a go and they did have a go and now they've come down again. I pointed out these areas here just to keep your perception in mind because what you want to do is you want to look for continuously reliable signals. For example, what happens when the shorts spike? These are the things that you want to keep in your mind. What happens? And if you actually can answer those questions and you have the understanding of what is happening, you're going to do really well in crypto. We can also see the long starting to turn around, but let's check out liquidations and see what's cooking. Because of weekend trading, we can see the volumes of derivatives that were liquidated is, is really quite low 45.61 million across a very low number 21,238 positions and when looking at the past 24 hours we can say about 73 percent of total liquidations were short liquidations over the past 12 hours say 68 percent short what about the past four hours it's gone the other way 63 percent long and what about the past hour? It's now gone the other way, nearly 51% uh, short. And when you look at this, short and longs, especially when there's low liquidity in the market, a low number of buyers and sellers, things can be very, very choppy. The global crypto market cap is currently 1.10 trillion, up 1.49% from yesterday. The greatest gainers over the past 24 hours rose up in front, 23.64% up, flow a little over 18%, LRC nearly 11% up, Cake 9.2% up, Theta 7.1% up, and Chainlink about 6.9% up. The greatest losers over the past 24 hours, DCR down 6.59%, LDO down about 4.5%, Optimism down 4.34, Synthetics down 3.46%, Compound down about 2.8%. LGRC said the active learning in the comments is really, really helpful. Thank you, my friend. And we talked about inner peace yesterday. And what is the power of inner peace? LGRC1 said the inner peace is the power you have over yourself. Once you have that power, nobody can manipulate you. This is really important in life, not to be manipulated. Exceptional comment, and there's a really good story in there as well. John had a really good comment about inner peace. Without self-mastery, inner volatility and emotions will control your trade, and smart money will eventually take your money. The rewards of inner harmony, inner peace, are being happy, finding gratitude everywhere, having no fear, and moving in synchronization with market waves. Thank you, my friend. Badger had some incredibly wise words. Trading is the best self-improvement tool because it requires inner peace and outer peace for it to work. We need a calm, rational, probabilistic mind for trading. We can't escape emotions, but we can learn to manage them. Emotions can hijack the rational mind. Emotions come from the need to control the outcome, the need to escape boredom. When we feel an urgency to trade, we can throw our trading plan out the window. Emotions can arise from the urgency to make money. However, the great traders are not trying to make money, but they're rather trying to perform well. That is a very, very insightful thing. Correct. This is what it's all about. It's about bringing your best self into the game every day. Winning or losing are really just parts of probability for them. And I think a key thing to also realize, you want to protect your profits as much as you can. When you're trading in a market like this, which is very, very volatile, protecting profits first is a pretty good way to go. A pretty good way to think about your portfolio. So Badger says, no anxious stalking for trades instead calm the body down somehow to move back into patience and see what the markets are willing to give you control the trade but the market controls the return it's important to never equate money with meaning you bring into your life these are two completely different things very very powerful words badger thank you my friend and thanks for thanks to everyone 
And when people say thank you to Ken and Kate, I just it touches my heart. Thanks so much, everyone. Let's have a look at how Bitcoin's gravity is playing out on all the alts. We can see Ethereum stronger, Binance coin way stronger. Go Binance coin, XRP just under, not as strong as Bitcoin at the moment. And what do we see with ADA? Cardano, ADA wants to party. It's starting to get above this resistance. That's what that spike is all about. What about Solana? It's underneath Bitcoin's gravity. Just currently, Doge is about spot on and DOT is becoming stronger. I thought it could be interesting to just take an example with Ethereum and we could look at Ethereum's current levels. So if we just zoom in here a little bit, what are we actually seeing? So for example, we've got support lines on Ethereum down here and we're just moving to the underside of a support line here. And we've seen that we've got a lot of negative air. And this is not surprising because there's a lot of selling activity in the market. Basically, all the cryptos have come up by leaps and bounds. The market is quite overheated. It would be reasonable for people to book in profits. And this is what we're seeing here. We could also see an accumulation of sellers, short sellers trying to push the price down. So let's look at what it means to be on the right side of a percentage. For example, from the current price, if we came all the way down to this particular support line in ETH, which is about 1299, say 1300, and then we just recovered the price, we would fall by 23.57%, but go up by 29.36%. This is what's called being on the right side of the percentage. And inside the crypto market, if we don't get global war, I would imagine the crypto is going to do quite well, but it's going to be very, very choppy. And what might happen if it came down to this 1300 and then it went back up to this particular resistance level, 1918, we'd have a 43% increase. But what if it went down a little bit lower? Let's say it came down to that second support line, down 31.82%, which would be about 1161. And then it just came back to the current price, down 31.8, up 45.97. This, this is what statistics is all about. When we go from a statistical probability perspective, and we know the price is negatively biased and it's always moving in waves, especially if it's starting to break support or the support is weakening. So you can see negative numbers are nothing to be afraid of. They actually create incredible positive gains. And what if we came down, for example, to about 1162 and rallied up to this 19, 18 level, that's a 62.27% increase. You can see being on the right side of the percentage is well, well worthwhile. And that's what Borsog is all about. The best way to Borsog is to use the CTKS method to draw up all your charts. That money is on the line and somebody is looking at one of those lines with particular interest. So when you do your line drawings, through the CTKS method, you're looking for convergence. Thank you very much to Buildy. Inner volatility leads to the worst behaviors in the market like panicking, FOMO, euphoria, and constantly second guessing yourself because your decisions are based on emotion instead of a base of probabilities. Inner harmony is all about calm and quiet time to listen to what the market is telling us. Having the mental bandwidth available to take it in and process information to determine probabilities and make your ANF decisions. As you say, Ken, you're always trying to synchronize us with the market. It does flow like a river waving up and down. Struggling against the river is always going to result in a tiring and frustrating lack of progress. Much better to accept that the river is going to flow where it wants to and work out how to adjust your life path to use the river's momentum to your advantage. If it changes direction and gives a pullback, Best let it be and adjust your path to move with it instead of fighting the to force the river down the path you want. Fantastic, Buildy. I've always said that you control the trade, but the market controls the return and it also controls its direction. 
There are so many fantastic comments in the comments section. Please go and check them out. And I want to thank everybody for their words of wisdom. We have so many incredible people in our beloved Global KS family. Thank you to everybody for your comments. I just wish I had more time to read out more. Timing the markets right now can be kind of difficult. So if you're finding that you need to be kind to yourself, if you're getting frustrated, please use rule 219, be kind to yourself, B-K-T-Y. It's really important as well as being kind to others. You can't have one without the other. Trading and investing can get incredibly frustrating. And that's why I put a little thing up here. Opportunities reset by the minute. Just think about that. Opportunities reset. Just give it a minute. If it went against you, just give it a minute. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video and also subscribing to the channel. We would love to have you as a part of our globally extended KS family. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers and to the CTKS ambassadors for assisting masterclass students. And of course, a very big thank you to you for watching and for being part of our global family. I've left helpful links in the description of this video, such as the tax software I use and links to the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass. Please seek out an ambassador to get 80% off. Make sure you use the links in the description of this video. And if you're going through financial hardship, please apply for the CTKS Partial Masterclass Scholarship. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.